Britain's never really had a simple relationship with the EU. If you go back to just after the Second World War in 1946, the former British Prime Minister Winston Churchill himself actually called for a United States of Europe. He just never intended the UK to be part of that. And then in the 1950s, Britain was caught up with the crumbling of its empire and so didn't get involved when the first six countries formed an economic union. It was really the Suez Crisis in 1956 that forced Britain to realise it was no longer a global power and so it turned rather reluctantly towards Europe. But then Britain was blocked by France. French President Charles de Gaulle vetoed Britain's membership twice in 1963 and 67, arguing that the UK wasn't really interested in European integration and would be a Trojan horse for American interests. Britain had to wait until after de Gaulle's departure before being granted membership and finally joined in 1973. But then, amid domestic political chaos, there was a referendum in the UK on European membership. Sound familiar? Well, in 1975, Britons voted to stay in the EEC by 67%, with the help on the campaign trail from Margaret Thatcher, then pro-European. But as European political integration pushed on, she became a skeptic. Maggie refused Britain's membership of the Schengen Free Travel Area in 1985 and was opposed to the concept of the euro as a single currency. Margaret Thatcher was boosted by a growing Eurosceptic wing within her own Conservative Party and in the influential right-wing press who saw Britain's sovereignty under attack. And ever since the end of the 1980s, the Europe headache has never really gone away for Conservative Prime Ministers who preside over a divided party. And that's what pushed David Cameron to call the fateful 2016 referendum. As we'll see in the next episode of Brexit. See you soon.